as we now bring you Deeper Life Bible Church Choir Ministrations from nations across the world. And the power of 
the gospel shall prevail. For we know in Christ all things are possible. supernatural deliverance through Christ. Yes, this is an event that's happening from Thursday the 23rd to Tuesday the 28th of June at 1600 hours with a special service on Sunday morning at 700 hours GMT and it's going to be broadcast worldwide via satellite and on all social media platforms. 
We're going to be seeking God for healing, salvation, and deliverance. So why don't you join me Thursday the 23rd through Tuesday the 28th. We'll see you there. God bless. It's true. The GCK is flying to Quara States. And yes, GCK 2.0 is ready for you on the dates. Thank God, GCK is supported by the Lord of Hosts. And thanks be to God, for GCK is here to save the lost. There's a power coming from Calvary. There's a power coming from the throne. And that power coming from Calvary from the throne will touch you. You'll never be the same again in Jesus. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we are escaped. That's your story for this month of June with GCK tagged Supernatural Delivery through Christ because I'm telling you that every poverty is cancelled sicknesses are cancelled all the infirmities and the works of the devil of the flesh they're cancelled in Jesus name live from Ilori Quara State and scheduled to fly across the world their satellite social media radio and television GCK 2.0 Global Crusade with Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui ministering supernatural deliverance through Christ for all. Andy Rosier is our guest music minister. Praise. Every song praise to you, God. June 23rd to June 28th, your special appointment for supernatural deliverance from Christ, featuring Ministers and Professionals Conference, and Saturday the 25th for Impact Academy, specially for young eagles to soar. This sixth month gives you six days to soar with Jesus, and together we will fly for supernatural deliverance through Christ. Your testimony will be greater than you ever imagined. have a ministry you'll have yourself you'll enjoy yourself you will enjoy your pride you'll enjoy your ego but you'll not have a ministry i pray that all those attitudes the lord will help us to correct them in jesus name even as i please all men in all things not seeking my own profit but the profit of many that they may be saved with them that are strong or to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. You're a minister, you're a preacher, whoever you are, missionary, not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor. You want to preach to your neighbor there in your community and you never say good morning to them, never say things they appreciate. And when they have, uh, you know, something that makes them happy, you never, you never think of them there in the community. And then you want to minister to them. I'm a preacher, and I stand for sound doctrine. You will, if you ever get to heaven, you might get to heaven all alone by yourself. It's the person who bends. The person who is flexible. The person who says, I need to catch him. I need to get him. I need to get him saved. And whatever it will take, I will not compromise. I'm going to stand on the word of God, but I need to bench. I will bench. Look at that person. They are so rich. Will never change his mind. You'll never have a convert for eternity. Your ministry will not have any profit. You're not a person that is wise to bench for other people. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. Look at verse 3, Romans chapter 15, verse 3. For even Christ pleased not himself. Even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. I believe you are a man, a woman of wisdom. God give you wisdom to digest the word and apply the word in your life in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and pray. Don't please yourself. If you are really called, you want to help the people you are preaching to, that God will help you. You need to bend, bend a little. Be flexible. And please the people you are ministering to so that your ministry will be acceptable to them and you'll save 
many, many souls as a reach out. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for your purpose, your plan, your goal for every life. We're asking, O oh Lord, that you open our eyes of understanding to behold your truth, the way you want us to see, to understand, and to comprehend, and then to lay our lives on the altar for you in total consecration and commitment so that, Lord, we'll become a real picture of what we read, what we learn, what we study in the world in Jesus' name. The world is not reading the Bible. Many people in our communities are not reading the Bible. But Lord, I pray that as they read our lives, as they see our lives, as they interact with us and we interact with them, they will read the Bible, not just one side of the Bible, the whole Bible, the whole truth and the whole doctrine of the world, they will read in our lives in Jesus' name. Grant us the grace to remain godly and to remain righteous and to remain heavenly minded so that the message the world sees in our lives will draw them to the kingdom in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down tonight. Welcome to a Bible study again. And we are in the epistle of Paul to the Galatians. Tonight we're looking at chapter 3, verses 10 all through to 13. Galatians chapter 3. Reading from verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law. Verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God it is evident for the just shall live by faith then in verse 12 and the law is not of faith the man that doeth them shall live in them verse 13 Christ has redeemed us from the law, from the curse of the law, be made a curse for us, for it is reaching. Cause it is everyone that hangeth on a tree. As you look at those verses and you read with understanding, you will get the emphasis that Paul the Apostle by the Spirit of God is laying on the world and what he is teaching us what we need to understand what we need to comprehend what we need to bring to our very heart our very life so that our lives will show and reflect actually the teaching of the Word of God the law was given by Moses. Not only the Ten Commandments, the moral law, the civil law, the ceremonial law, together with circumcision. And the children of Israel knew that they were to obey the commandments of God and the law of God. But then they could not because of the weakness of the flesh. And so Paul the Apostle was reminding the Israelites, reminding the Jews, and reminding the Gentiles that obedience to the law, the whole law of Moses, 
cannot say. Why? Because no man on earth, in any generation, in any dispensation, can live perfectly by the law that we find in the old covenant. And because we were weak, humanity weak, the whole world weak, and could not obey the word of God, and could not be saved by obedience to the law, Christ came and fulfilled the law perfectly. He was the only one from the time the law was given until the time he came. He was the only one that obeyed the law of God perfectly, spotlessly, and without any blame, blamelessly. And because he lived a perfectly righteous life, he could pay a penalty and he could be sacrificed for our sins. And now we imperfect human beings we look away from our own obedience to the law, which cannot save. And we look to the Lord who rendered perfect obedience so that through him, his sacrifice, his substitution, we can be saved through that. That the law, which we could not fulfill, and all those ceremonial things we could not do. The moral law we could not obey. He has done that on our behalf. And as we now trust him, depend on him, believe him, then his righteousness is imputed unto us. And we're redeemed, we're answered, we're forgiven were set free on the basis of what Christ has done. And then, after we are saved, we are redeemed, He gives us His grace. He gives us His life, so that now He lives the righteous life through us. And we are able to say that it is not I who lives, but Christ who lives in me and the life I now live that I live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me and after that salvation we keep on trusting him believing him leaning on him trusting him believing him leaning on him reflect the life of Christ, pleasing the Father, obeying the Father, obeying the word of God. That, in summary, is what Paul the Apostle was telling the Galatians and what he's telling us as we live the life of the Christian today. The topic tonight, our redemption and release from the curse our redemption because of Christ, because of his sacrifice, because of his substitution, we now redeem our redemption and release from the curse. There are three things we're looking at for proper understanding. Number one, revelation of the curse of the law. The revelation of the curse of the law. Number two, redemption from the curse of the law our redemption is setting us free is cutting the cord and is liberating us emancipating us and eliminating the curse of the law away from every life of the believer redemption from the curse of the law number three release from the curse for the lawless. The lawless are the people that live by themselves, to themselves, without any reference to anybody around them. 
what they want to do, they do. If they want to box the air, they do. Never minding that somebody's nose is near, they are punching because they are not under any kind of rule and regulation. They live anyhow, they behave anyhow, and they say they are at liberty. Uh -uh. We're released from the curse as well as the character of the lawless. When Christ saves us, he doesn't save us. So now, disrespect God, deny God, and live unrighteously. We are saved from the curse of the lawless and from the character of the lawless. Re released from the curse of the lawless. Let's come to number one. Number one, we're looking at the revelation of the curse of the law. Look at that again, Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. It says, For as many as have the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, God said this, everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them verse 11 in verse 11 but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of god it is evident for the just shall live by faith verse 12 tells us the law is not of faith for the man that doeth them shall live in them. The first part of verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. What's the curse of the law? That the revelation, the word of God has made very clear. Three things here. Number one, recognition of the curse of the law. Number two, realization of the curse on the lawless number three reiteration of the curse of the lord look at number one number one recognition of the curse of the lord we read already galatians chapter 3 verse 10 where it tells us about the curse of the lord look at deuteronomy chapter 27 reading from verse 26 cosage be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say, Amen. All the law that God revealed to Moses, God told Moses to collect and to get together, gather together all the children of Israel and reach the law to their hearing. And then at the end, uh, he will say, Cursed be he that confirmeth not, that doeth not, that agrees not. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. And the people, all the people shall say, Amen. Look at Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 3. And say thou unto them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Thus says the Lord God of Israel. Yes, Jeremiah might be the one that utters the words. Moses might be the one that utters the words. Another minister might be the one that utters the word. That doesn't make that the words of Jeremiah, the words of Moses, or the words of Isaiah. It's the Lord. And say thou unto them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of of this covenant they were given the old covenant 
and they were expected to be obedient to the words of the old covenant and those who did not the lord said there will be a curse there will be a judgment upon them that the curse that paul the apostle by the spirit is referring to the curse on the disobedient in the old covenant that did not continue in all the words of the law the recognition of the curse of the law let's look at number two here number two the realization of the curse on the lawless the people who are lawless that is the law of god is there the word of god is there but the act has said the law of god does not exist the act has said there is no demand for righteousness and they live they act they behave anyhow anywhere everywhere they are lawless look at them first timothy chapter one reading from verse nine knowing this that the law is not made for a righteous man a person who has become cleansed forgiven set free the law is not for him he is redeemed from the law from the curse of the law he lives by a higher principle was that principle looking unto jesus because we should follow after his steps and because he has christ the redeemer Christ the righteous, Christ the perfect, Christ the Savior is looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And as a redeemed righteous man, the law of Moses, the whole law is not reaching for him. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient for the ungodly and for sinners for unholy and profane for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers for man slayers and then in verse 10 in verse 10 it says for the homongers for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, the righteous man, the saved man, the converted man lives on the grounds of sound doctrine. For the lawless, the unrighteous, the ungodly, the unconverted, the sinner lives by the rule of lawlessness. But we are told in Second Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 14. Second Peter 2, verse 14. Have been eyes full of adultery. Now that's not a righteous man, but a lawless man. And a lawless man has the law as a schoolmaster, holding him, convicting him, condemning him, and because it's unrighteous, the law which is the schoolmaster will drag him to Christ for confession, for repentance, and then for a new life. But now look at the lawless man having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and hearts they have exercised with covetous practices. Look at this, God said, children cursed children 
because they are lawless and they have not come to Christ to redeem them from the law and from lawlessness and from the curse of the law. It tells us in verse 15, it says, which have forsaken the right way and are gone following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozal, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. That's a lawless man. He loved the wages, the result, the reward of unrighteousness. Then in verse 16, we're told, but he was rebuked for his iniquity. He was rebuked for his lawlessness. He was rebuked for his unrighteousness. The dumb ass speaking with man's voice for bad, the madness of the prophet. Verse 17, it says, These are wells without water. They are characters without conversion. They are unrighteous without redemption. They are the people that go through life and they forsake God, they forsake the word of God, they forsake the example of Christ, and they are clouds without water. Clouds that are carried with a tempest, whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. Look at number three here. Number three, the reiteration of the curse of the Lord. Now note the difference. The curse of the law. That's of the law of Moses. The law that passed away. And when you come to Christ, the curse of the law has passed away also with the law that is abolished. But there is the curse of the Lord. And the Lord does not pass away. His righteousness does not pass away. His expectation does not pass away. Its demand does not pass away. Here we have the reiteration of the curse of the Lord. Psalm 119, verse 21. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do err from thy commandments. In the new dispensation now, the Lord still hates pride. He hates arrogance. He hates being pompous. He hates being haughty. He hates being all by yourself. And nobody can talk to you because you feel higher, higher than the word of God, higher higher than all men or women around you, higher, higher than seven men that can correct you and render uh, wisdom. You are higher than everybody. The curse of the law is on the proud. He rejects them, but he gives grace to the humble. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do err from thy commandments. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 33. In Proverbs chapter 3 verse 33, the curse of the Lord. Understand? The law has passed away. The old covenant law passed away. But the Lord has not passed away. And here it says, the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked till this present hour. God hates wickedness. Till this present hour, if you are wicked, if you are cruel, if you are injurious, and if you oppress other people, 
God still hates wickedness. And he brings judgment and he brings punishment on the wicked. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. But he blesses the habitation of the just. Zechariah chapter 5. We're reading from verse 3. Zechariah chapter 5 verse 3. Then said he unto me, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For every one that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to each. And every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to each. It's saying here, this is the curse that goes all over the face of the earth for everyone that steals. Now, if somebody steals and the law enforcement agents catch him and they take him to court and he's judged and the uh, judge asks him are you guilty or you are not guilty and he says i'm not guilty did you steal that thing you are prosecuted for yes he did answer me again are you guilty or you are not guilty even though you have accepted you have stolen I am not guilty. Why? Because I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. And because I'm not under any law, I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. That stealing is nothing. Uh, the judge will say, you don't understand your Bible. In the old covenant, you had the law, and that word is passed away. After the law passed away, the Lord is still alive. And in the new covenant, it says, Let him that stole steal no more. And Zacchaeus said, Lord, if I've taken anything by false accusation, I will restore it fourfold. The word of the Lord is still there. And the Lord, our Savior, Redeemer, has not passed away. The law has passed away, old covenant, but now the Lord of the world has not passed away. And it still says, Then said ye unto me, this is the curse that goes forth over the face of the whole earth for everyone that stealeth. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it tells us, I will bring it forth, says the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name, and it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof, and the stones thereof. Let's come to point number two now. Point number two, redemption from the curse of the law. We're reading from Galatians chapter 3, verse 11. And that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. The just shall live by faith. No man is justified by the works of the law. Why? Because no man can render perfect obedience to the law of God. That's why we come and we say, Rock of Ages, clear for me. Let me hide 
my imperfect self in thee and let the water and the blood from your wounded side the flood be your sin the double kill salvation the first kill sanctification the second kill the first kill will cleanse all your external outward sins away if we confess our sin he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness he forgives our external sin the first kill but then he also sanctifies us if we walk in the light as he is in the light he says we have fellowship with him and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanseth us internally from all sin the blood from the river side with blood be of sin the double kill cleansing me and saving me from all sin it says the just shall live by faith we're looking at this under three perspectives number one the justifier a redeemer from the curse of the law number two the just redeemed from the curse for lawlessness number three the joy and righteousness of commitment to the lord number one number one the justifier and redeemer from the curse of the law that's what we just read look at that last line of verse 11 the just shall live by faith and that shall find uh, look at romans chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 24 that christ is the justifier our so-called good works our self-righteousness cannot justify us i pay money for this i pay money for that cannot justify us i was born a christian by the way nobody is born a christian you are born of the flesh you are born carnal you are born rebellious it is coming to christ that brings conversion but being born in a christian family that does not bring justification we have to come deliberately unto the Lord. A day, a time, a moment that we realize we're sinners. We confess our sins. We turn away from our sins. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can say on this particular day, at this particular time, I was convicted. I confessed, I prayed, I turned, I was converted, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we get saved, how we get justified by faith, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Let's look at verse 25. Verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, through faith in his cleansing blood, through faith in his pardoning blood, through faith in his righteous blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of, of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. And then in verse 26, it tells us to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier, the justifier, the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Let's look at chapter 4, Romans chapter 4, reading from verse 5. But to him 
that walketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly. Him, Christ. Him, the Savior. Him, the one that died for us and bore all our punishment and took away all our condemnation. Him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. His faith is counted for righteousness. We'll come to the Lord, and by faith we believe. He died, that was for me. He said, Father, forgive them, that was for me. He took my sin, he took my suffering, he took my sorrow, he took my shame, he took my condemnation. I make it personal. Lord, I believe. And then uh, that faith is counted for righteousness. Look at number two here. Number two, the just redeemed from the curse for lawlessness. We're looking at Galatians chapter 3 verse 11 but that no man no man no philosopher no man no moralist no man no religious man no man no traditionalist no man no priest prophet no person, no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. He may be justified in the sight of men. They say it's a nice man, justified before man. Before his wife, I know my husband, perfect, justified before the wife. The husband might say, I know my wife, perfect. And if I find no fault in her, justified before man. All those people, men or women, that look like angels to everybody outside, none of them by the works of the law is justified in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith now the way you see the pharisees the traditionalists run after christ persecute christ oppose christ criticize christ because he was telling the people by faith by faith if you saw the way they treated christ you will think the just shall live by faith it's a new thing. If you saw the way they ran after Paul and opposed Paul, criticized Paul because he emphasized faith above the law, you will think it was a new thing. But now I want you to look at Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2, we're looking at verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2, we're looking at verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Behold, a soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Look at this. But the just shall live by his faith. Old Testament, looking forward to the time when the law will be abolished, looking forward to the time when the preaching of faith will be established. He already told them, Old Covenant, you know, those Pharisees were not reading their Old Testament very well. And those Sadducees were not reading their Old Testament very well. And it is those who are not reading the word of God very well. Those are the people that misunderstand. They say it's bringing new things into our ears. 
it says something new something we never heard before they should have heard that before habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 look at that last line but the just shall live by his faith that's all paul the apostle emphasized romans chapter 1 i'm reading from verse 16 romans chapter 1 verse 16 it tells us for i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the jew first and also to the greek look at verse 17 verse 17 for therein is the righteousness of god revealed from faith to faith as it is reaching paul the apostle said for it is why the persecution and the doctors of law described why the opposition all i'm saying is as it is reaching the just shall live by faith